Hey. Sorry about that. <laughs> Mark Schiff. For the podcast, You Don't Know Schiff, and I'm here with Lil Benjamin, my uh, very wonderful friend and uh, sidekick is okay, or, or co-host? Do you do you stand one way or another, sidekick, co-host? I got to check with the union about titles and everything, because yeah. it affects my residuals. I understand. So, this is a talking shift, and um, we've done a bunch of these, and people seem to like them, and uh, it's just a uh, role. I like me. That. Seem to like them. Seem. Well, you, know, you can't speak. <laughs> My wife does not let no me speak for everybody. When I go, yeah. you know, everybody, she cuts me off right there. Yeah. She knows it's not true. Even though I was about to say, you know, everybody drinks water, and uh, <laughs> There's no everybody. There's got to be someone that doesn't drink water somewhere. I found a dog yesterday. Okay. I found a dog. I already have a dog. So let me just give you a little backstory. I have found animals in the past. I was, when my kids were little, I was driving in our uh, Volvo station wagon and I had my three boys with me. It was just the three of them and myself. And we get to the corner of Pico Robertson in Los Angeles and sitting there on the sidewalk is a cockatiel little bird. Mm. And I did not uh, know it was a cockatiel, but I knew it was a fancy type of bird. It wasn't just like a pigeon or, mm. you know, a street bird. And he was about to step into the uh, gutter and maybe get run over because Pico Robinson is a very busy uh, intersection. I pulled the car over. I said, let's try to save him. Mm. And I always, uh, on this podcast, I'm not wearing a hat, but I always wear a hat, like when I'm outdoors and stuff like that. And we go outside the bird sees us and he jumps up in the air. They, they can do that. And he lands on top of a bus stop. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I did this, but I said to my son, run into that store right now. It's a grocery store and get some bread. And he ran out, I gave him a dollar and he, he came out with some uh, lavish, you know, like Middle Eastern bread. Mm -hmm. And I rip open the package and I show the bird a piece of bread and I throw it down. And lo and behold, he zooms down and starts eating the bread. I take my hat off and I throw it over and I cup the hat and mm -hmm. we all get in the car and I put the bird on the dashboard of the car mm -hmm. and I drive to Petco and I go in and I say uh, to the guy, can you come outside a minute? What, what do I have here? And he looks, he goes, that's a cockatiel. I said, you sell them? He goes, yes, we do. He said, how much are they? He goes, a hundred dollars. I said, you have cages? He says, yes, we do. And I called my wife. I said, honey, I found a cockatiel, a bird. <laughs> I'm at Petco with the boys and everybody. We all want to get a cage and bring them home. She said, okay. And we brought the, the bird home and he became one of my favorite pets of all time. And we found him on Pico, on the street Pico, and we named him Pico. Yeah. And he lived until he, he passed on and he was a friend like you wouldn't believe. The surprising part of the story to me is that you could get lavash for $1. This was um, 15, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you had him for 15 years, you said? I know I had about eight or nine years, and then he, he passed. Um, that's another story, but anyway, we named him Pico. Okay. So. Not, why not Robertson? He was standing yeah. on Pico, not Robertson. He was at the okay. intersection, but he was more on Pico. Got it. So uh, we named him Pico. Then um, 15 years ago or so, 14, not that long ago, maybe 12 years ago, my mm -hmm. wife and I were going to visit somebody at their house, mm -hmm. and my wife was in the car. I had to drop something off at their house. Mm -hmm. And run out of the bushes onto the doorstep, the little ratty looking thing. I go, honey, come here, look at this. And we weren't even sure, but it turned out to be a Yorkshire Terrier. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh God, look at him. He's like a little shivering and wet and cold. And I said, let's bring him home. We drove back home, rang the bell. My son answered the door. I said, here, take him, put him in the bathroom and make him a scrambled egg. We found the dog on Glenville. We named him Glendy, her Glendy. Okay. Now, now, was this the same son that bought the bread? I think it was actually. It was Noah. Noah, my youngest, went in to buy the bread, and he made the scrambled he also egg. Made the egg. You can put that on he his resume. The, we had the dog for like ten years, nine years. So let me ask you this: did, did you make any attempt to find its owner? Yes, I strapped a note to the bird's foot and I had him fly <laughs> around. No, yes, we did. We in those back a long time ago, you didn't have the sites you have now. Like, like it's neighborhood, not nearly as many, yeah. yeah. So yes, we did. We checked to make sure if it was chipped. It wasn't chipped. Mm. We looked at signs all over the place. We put it on Facebook. Put a picture. Nothing. Okay. Uh, we I was did. Just we, curious. It's a good question, and and you'll see how that question 
pays off right now. Okay. So that, that was a good question. And uh, we had the dog, and the dog, Alva Shalom, passed away. He was mm-hmm. Nifter, and uh, he's he's gone in Shemayim mm-hmm. with the rest of the dogs. He's a wonderful dog. So we named him Glenville. So we had Pico and Glendy. Mm-hmm. Now I bumped into this hooker. No. So anyway, uh, that's another story. We'll get to that. It's a bit more Vegas. So yesterday, cut to yesterday, I'm walking my dog. I have a dog now named Leo. And uh, we didn't find Leo. Is that your first pet not named after a street? No, I had other pets. Uh, oh. My first pets ever were parakeets named Happy and Peachy. Very upbeat names, Happy and Peachy. Can you think of more upbeat names than Happy and Peachy? You nailed it. Yeah. So uh, I'm walking Leo, my little uh, four-pound Yorkie yesterday, and I see this little mm. dog running around on my block on Warner Street. Whenever I see a loose dog, as long as it's not a pit bull or a German mm-hmm. shepherd or something that could rip my throat out, I don't feel comfortable trying to save loose pit bulls. Sure. I just don't. I don't know. But anyway, this dog was kind of a 10, 12 pound dog. And I said to him, uh, I said, come here, come here. And he looks at me and runs down the block about 100 miles an hour, gets to the corner of Robertson, makes a laugh. And I go, he's going to get mm-hmm. killed. Mm-hmm. Robertson is very busy street. Pico Robertson, which I told you, and he disappears. And there's nothing. I can't go after him. You know, who knows where he is now? And, you know, 15 minutes later, I hear outside my window, Come here, come here. The mailman talking to my wife. No, it was... I um, thought it was a talking dog. Yeah. So I look out my window, and there's that dog, and there's two people from my neighborhood trying to surround him a little and catch him. Mm-hmm. He's loose. And um, I come out there, and I go, that dog was just on my street, ran down to Robertson, thank God. And we all kind of gather around, and she had a leash, and she throws it over his neck, gets mm-hmm. him. And uh, we got him now. Nice. So the guy that's there says, listen, I got to go home. Good. Good luck. You know, whatever you want to do. Goodbye. And the woman is standing there with me and says, "Uh, what do we do? And I immediately fell in love with this dog. Mm -hmm. I looked at him. He was wonderful looking, just beautiful, very dirty. She said, "Uh, you know, I'm going to work now. I can't take him with me. And I said, no, I'll take him. I'll put him in my backyard. I'll feed him. And we'll try to find uh, his home. Did you make Noah feed him? Noah's in New York. Hmm. So he's in the backyard. Now I have a dog now, and I didn't like to put the two of them together. You know, I let my dog stay sure. in the house, and this one out in the back, and I made some scrambled eggs. That's the, Whenever I Classic. find a dog, the first thing I do is make scrambled eggs. Maybe where's he going to get out? Dogs are going to start coming to yeah, your yard. Come to the, hey, there's like a diner, yeah. you know, and maybe he's got potatoes this time, Shecky's potatoes. So, Ask um, for the lavash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's who that should be the breakfast so anyway i feed him he gobbles it up i give him water he's drinking it and he's very friendly very warm to me mm-hmm. and he's got a, a green collar around his neck but mm-hmm. no no tag mm-hmm. just a collar so anyway, i call my wife i tell her yeah you know believe us I, I i facetime i show her the dog what happens is now we got the dog so we posted it on two sites we posted it on uh neighborhood watch or whatever it's called next door you know, some, yeah, next door, and yeah. then on something, pause something. And uh, we post. We put up pictures of the dog, but we don't put up a picture of the green collar because okay. we, I want somebody to identify. If they're going to say it's their dog, they need to identify it. Okay. And this was a lime green collar, so they, they would have to know the color of the collar. Sure. I spent my entire day yesterday taking care of this dog. I took him to a vet five blocks from my right. house and to see if he was chipped. Mm-hmm. No chip in him. Nothing. They scan. They put the scanner all over him. No chip. Mm -hmm. Then I called my vet. I said, I found this dog. I don't know if I'm going to end up keeping him or giving him away, but I want to make sure that he's okay and whatever. Can I bring him in for a little physical? He says, bring him in three o'clock. I bring him in, listens to his heart. It's fine. He doesn't seem to have fleas. He seems fine. I said, what do I owe you? He says, no, it's free. I'm not going to charge you for this visit. So the, the, the scanning was free and the visit to the vet was free. It's kind of when you do a nice thing, the world kind of comes together with you. So now every time you bring your dog in, you're going to be like, I found a dog. Can you I just found quick? him. And he goes, he yeah. looks like the one you always had. Yeah, no, yeah. I just found him. I don't know the block. Yeah. So anyway, I get home and uh, I got the dog and I'm, I took the dog with me for a couple of rides. I took him to a Petco and I got mm-hmm. him a, a harness because I didn't want the little thing around his neck to snap and right. him get but- away again. I thought you were going to so get him, him a bird cage. So it's, yeah, it's I gave him a $30 call. harness, and, a, and I bought a cockatiel while I was there. <laughs> so get him home. I've told all the kids. Now, my son, Eli, wanted a dog. 
Mm-hmm. I said, if nobody steps up, we're thinking about keeping them. But if you want them, you can have them. Mm-hmm. And Eli and his girlfriend look at the dog and they go, we love this dog. And I think uh, they, they stepped up and they want to take it. Nice. So cut to the chase. My wife calls me and says, uh, I just got a phone call from this girl. Says it's her dog. Mm-hmm. Call her. Now this dog had very, very bad teeth. Dog's teeth are white like your teeth. His teeth are almost black. Hmm. Just very, very bad. So I call the girl and I say, hi. Uh, and she goes, oh, I heard you found my dog. I said, well, I don't know. What color collar was the dog wearing? I said, she goes, pink. I said, okay, pink collar. It was lime green, but I don't say that right away. And I said, "Yeah, how many teeth is the dog missing? And she goes, he's got new teeth coming in. So I said, I don't think this is your dog. Uh-huh. He didn't have a pink collar. He had a green collar. And he has no new teeth coming in. She said, I didn't say new teeth. I said, he has loose teeth. I said, yeah, loose teeth. She goes, he has very bad teeth. Now she's on to something. I said, but he, he, had a, he didn't have a pink collar. She said, he was stolen from my backyard. Guy stole huh. it. I have an on ring camera. So anyway, I said, send me pictures of the dog. And she sends me pictures, and there's no doubt that this is the dog. The dog had uh-huh. unique, unique features, like no dog I'd ever seen. It had eyelashes that came out like an inch. The tail is all black. And he mm-hmm. had a black spot right in the middle of his head. Mm-hmm. And this is definitely the dog. So I said, it's your dog. It's your dog. So I said, uh, how do you want to do this? I'll give it back. Yeah. <laughs> So I said, how do you want to do this? So she goes, um, my father and I will drive over to get it if you give me your address. And I give him the address. I said, where are you? She goes, San Fernando Valley. We're about 45 oh minutes, an hour away. I'm thinking, how does this dog yeah. get to my house, you know, from there? But anyway, there's no doubt it's a dog. I uh-huh. said to her, by the way, I went and took him in to see if he was chipped. There's no chip. You can have him back, of course, but you need to chip him. Uh-huh. And I said, the teeth, and she goes, we're going to fix the teeth soon. <laughs> and then I said, by the way, I gave him a bath. So anyway, she says, My, we'll be there in a little while. I said, call me when you're five minutes away. Uh-huh. So um, five minutes before, she says, my father, I didn't go. She goes, my father is coming in in a uh, Ford 150. He'll be there in five minutes. I said, park on Livonia Street. Mm-hmm. That's where my back gate is. Now, in case I was going to keep the dog. In case nobody showed up, hmm. what do you think I named the dog? Oh, what street did you find him on? Livonia. Well, I don't know that you said Horner. I saw him originally on Horner, but when he oh, came back, he was, we, we got him on Livonia. Oh, named her yeah. Livonia. Livonia, yeah. And uh, everybody I told, we named Livonia, but we keep the dog, you go, Livy. We'll call her Livy. Yeah. For short. So uh-huh. I sat in my backyard, and this dog, I feel like crying almost, he fell asleep in my lap. Huh put his head in my on my lap hmm. and um, kind of fell asleep there. And I didn't want to give him up, but it was the right thing to do. I had been looking for a dog, a loose dog in the street for years. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a little something, a secret thing that they got going on in their life. One thing that I do, because I, I remember when we found our first dog, um, Glendy. Mm-hmm. Ever since then, I, I look around, I go, maybe if I see a dog, and I can you know, save another dog, give him a good home. And I've been looking. And this dog showed up. Mm-hmm. And I believe in God. And I think, uh, you know, it's it's a hard thing to, to kind of, if you, you know, go, what does God care about dogs? I mean, look at all the people that are dying all over the world and not being saved. What is this dog? But somehow I, I, I think he has a hand in everything. And he knew that I would be the right person to take care mm-hmm. of this dog for one day and get it back to these people. That's sweet. Yeah. So, this dog. Uh, this dog had the best one day vacation from a horror of being let right. out in the street and chased by cars and craziness. All of a sudden he landed in uh, the Taj Mahal here. Did she send you the video of the guy stealing the dog? In the yes. Place? She sent the video of a guy walking. They had two dogs in the backyard. You don't see him grabbing the dog, but you see him walking away with yeah. the dog. And you see a little pink collar on him. Because I do know that there are expensive breeds of dogs that people steal and they sell them. But it seems almost like this was random or like a revenge thing or something. Yeah, like, it, it it's it's seemed like this guy... By the way, there was another dog in my neighborhood yesterday, too loose. And mm-hmm. it's weird that there are two dogs in the same neighborhood. So perhaps mm-hmm. this guy was just a, a lunatic, steals dogs and 
drops them off somewhere. You drops know? them off in a Jewish neighborhood. Drops them off. Uh, Where they so can get egg and an egg and bread. scrambled eggs and uh, muffins, yeah. and the challah. <laughs> so that was the uh, found dog story. I fell in love with this dog, and I'm telling you, when mm-hmm. I went to the vet, mm-hmm. he said, "How long do you have this dog?" I said, three hours." He goes, "This dog <laughs> loves you." Oh. I mean, in the vet's office, he had he would he jumped into my lap and put his head like on my chest. Yeah, no, and it's I, interesting and, with animals because we we have a cat, our cat Einstein, but he's generally afraid of people that he's never met before. And we had a guy come over; he was repairing some stuff, and the cat went up to him and he pet him, and then he was following him around the house. So somehow, right, that's they know into it. Yeah, there is no doubt that this dog immediately trusted me. Mm-hmm. And knew that I had his welfare, his my best intentions for him. And I was yeah. not going to hurt. And by the way, I told him that. I, I'm going to cry in this podcast. I'm telling you, I I looked him in the eye, held his head, and mm-hmm. I looked him in the eye, and I said, Lavonia, <laughs> this is the deal. If I don't keep you, if we don't keep you here. I promise you, we will find you a good home. You will not be out in the cold. You will be safe. And you will be taken care of. I, I looked him in the eyes. I held his head like that. And I told him that. Mm-hmm. I think he understood. That's nice. There's That's, a whole, whole other side to you that we didn't know about. Yeah. Because I was known as the crocodile hunter. That's the other side. <laughs> so that's you, my dog story. My shaggy dog nice. story. And um, I'm glad that I got a chance to tell it to you. Now, now America knows it too. So that's it. That's a talking shift. So thank you for sharing that story. This has been a talking shift, which is part of the You Don't Know Shift podcast. We thank you for listening. If you don't already follow us, please do so on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening to this. And if you like this episode or any other one, send it to a friend. Let them know we're out there. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.